Boys, we're back glazing zombie survival yet again, because if you didn't have enough incentive to play it before, you're going to have even more now. I enjoyed this game mode. I played a few times a week, and then it's kind of set it and forget it until it resets. But take a look here, boys, with the challenges. I've had them all completed, so I can just collect them all in one shot, and you can see they added all these rewards, these eternal flames. And if you're not really sure what to do with these eternal flames, I already covered it in a previous video briefly, but I will do a mega Uru or mega Odin's blessing upgrade video in the future once I save up enough. But let me just go ahead and hit collect all so you can see. Look at this. Just from one week, you get a thousand flames. Yeah, I know 20 crystals. Haha. <laughs> a thousand flames, 160 tokens plus 260, 300, you know, whatever, 400. So you get like 500 tokens. Plus, you get a thousand eternal flame. Then you go and take that to the shop. You can now buy eternal flame. Look at this. I can buy another 2,500. And I'll still have, boom, I'm going to do it. I'll still have plenty of tokens left over for the tier four materials. And I'm still glazing the tier four materials. You got to be picking this up every single week an extra 300 carbonadium, then an extra 300 soul of the This is like one to two days of farming. That you're going to collect every single week. This adds up. I know it doesn't seem like a lot initially. But you buy it here. You buy it from the other world battle shop. You buy, you get it from here. You get it from there. This event. That event. And suddenly you've got enough material to really ramp your tier 4 uh, upgrades. And that's what I've been doing. So, uh, you know, zombie survival was already good. Now with the eternal flame, it's even better. And even if you're not going to spend like any money. Genuinely, you collect these eternal flames right you i got how much i got five thousand right now and you use that all you do is you burn a random mythic uru and you get free upgrades essentially so you just take what you farm for free from zombie survival you take it into your favorite character you go to their uh, odin's blessing and boom you awaken it you just burn one random mythic uru a hundred thousand gold which is nothing 250 of that which you just farmed so you can do four, essentially you can do four uh, Odin's Blessing upgrades free every single week. So you can do almost a full character a month just f off the free uh, Eternal Flame that you farm from Zombie Survival. So you can, you can, so with the ones that you buy, just, just from the challenges, by the way, that's not using tokens to buy it in the shop. Using tokens to buy it in the shop, you could probably do like two characters a month. You're just going to be ramping through your characters. Boom, 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 boom. Getting all of those free stats. Yeah, you're probably going to run out of Mythic Uru before you run out of Eternal Flame. It's fantastic. So I wanted to give you guys a, a tiny bit of an updated guide here. This week, I know a lot of people have struggled. Um, I think by the time this video comes out, this week will be have, will have reset already. But for the for when it comes around again, or just in general, if you see a similar, a similar set of circumstances developing, you can um, develop a strategy yourself based on these strategies. Because... I covered a lot of other strategies in my first zombie survival video where you're stacking four supports with one character uh, with someone like Thor, for example, or someone like Jean or Luna or Ghost Rider or Doctor Strange, and you're just stacking a bunch of supports. But what if you want to bring in two DPSs? So this strategy is not mine. It's actually a uh, shout out to Pedro, aka MPKB, uh, excellent, fantastic uh, MFF player and YouTuber, uh, really pushing the limit on what characters can do one of the best channels you can watch if you want to see really the tippy top of what uh, characters are able to do when they're piloted, you know, when they're controlled by one of the best players and they have one of the one of the max builds available. He puts out videos every single week on the strategies for zombie survival. So I'm actually following his setups because he really has his pulse on what works. He takes the time to back test these things and he comes up with better strategies than anybody else. So. Yeah, I'm just cribbing his his thing here. Wanted to give him full, um, you know, shout out and, and sort of full credit for this because I wouldn't have thought of this on on, on my own. So what I'm going to do here, we're going to take on stage 60. Uh, right now I'm rank four or five. No, I'm all the way at rank seven. Yeah, I just did level 30 just kind of not as a joke, but just sort of as like a placeholder. Uh, and now I'm going to submit sort of a more competitive score to at least take the top three. We're going to go to 60 here with uh, Doctor Strange. And I think my build on Namor is a mighty, uh, is a mighty judgment. And then for yeah, and then for Thor it is a mighty rage. So we're gonna queue up the challenge here. And what I also did, which I showed you at the beginning when I 
when I clicked, uh, you know, challenge it, uh, and I collected all those rewards is um, we got to do a couple of things here. Okay, we're going to have to reset here. We have to do a couple of things. You're going to want to turn off autoplay, obviously, and I'll explain why soon. And then you're going to want to turn this off specifically for when you're using two DPSs. When you're not using two DPSs, when you're only using one DPS, this button doesn't matter. But if you're using two DPSs, in this case, one of them is AI controlled, you're going to want to turn that off. So I'm going to reset this. And what I actually did to farm up all of those challenges when I when I went here and I and I uh, grabbed them all, I just set it to level one and I just kept farming with the same team over and over again on stage one. So just go take an overpowered team in like this, for example, with three supports or four supports and just farm it like five, six times so you can get all the easy rewards out of the way, slurp them all up for the week, and then you can play one more time at the end of the week to try and secure your ranking. So I'm going to do nothing. This is the strategy here. I'm going to do nothing for the first like 20 seconds. And again, big shout out to MPKB Pedro uh, for this strategy. The reason why you're doing this is the ISO 8 set bonus. That's right. The, the ISO 8 set bonus is a buff that has a 54 second cooldown. I got to get out of here. And so what you're going to do is you're going to wait until about 136 and then you're going to start attacking. And that way, when you uh, when the boss is up, you're going to uh, have your ISO 8 set bonus back again. Now, unfortunately for Namor, he's kind of low HP. So I'm going to pop off my tier four and try to like help him. Um, he, in my other runs, this didn't happen, but hey, it is what it is. Because you have the four and the five available, you don't have to worry too much about charging up um, your, your, uh, your seven because you can see it charges up pretty fast. You may want to hold it after the, the first time you use it. Um, but I'm, I'm actually not sure because I haven't done this before. I wanted to show you guys live and kind of just explain what I'm doing rather than uh, show you guys a perfect run because things can go wrong. Genuinely, things can go wrong. Um, we're going to do one more rotation here um, and then we're going to get out. I was hoping that uh, Namor would be on the other side here. The boss is going to spawn. OK, and what I want to do is I want to pause the game here and I want to turn this on. And what's going to happen is Namor is going to pop his tier three or not pop his tier three. He's going to um, he's going to pop his tier four. He's going to pop his fifth skill. He's basically going to do more damage now. So I'm stacking as much damage as possible at the same time. So there we go. We pop our uh, tier four skill. We pop our fifth skill. We pop our our first skill. We don't want to get hit by that. So we have to kind of chill out here for a second. We're going to go back in and do it all again. And hopefully we get the kill on Doctor Strange here. Boom. So you can see from this, we could probably go a little bit higher. We probably did not reach the absolute maximum, but the reason why you take advantage of that button there on the pause menu is to sort of maximize the burst. Because if this button had been active from the beginning of the fight with this particular um, stage mechanic, like with an, on this week where the six skill is blocked, but the seventh skill is not blocked, then Namor on the AI would just be popping the seventh skill whenever. And by manipulating this and turning it off until the boss shows up, you guarantee that you will pop your seven, bringing out Beta Ray Bill or Ghost Rider or whoever the striker is, and Namor will pop out the next best striker, whether it's Thor, whether it's Black Widow, whoever you have built up as the, the sort of best striker, right? So you maximize the amount of damage. And then on a week, for example, if there's another week in the future where let's say the fifth skill is locked um, and the seventh skill is locked, but the sixth skill is not locked, same strategy will apply. Because then if you're, as, as long as you're using two DPSs, you're going to want to use this button and, and, and sort of lock it and unlock it strategically, turn it on, turn it off strategically so that your AI bursts as much damage as possible when the boss shows up and not sooner than that. Right. You can't stop them from popping off their, um, you know, their other skills. You, you can't really stop them at the beginning of the fight, for example, uh, from from waiting for the ISO 8 set bonus and stuff like that. But you can stop them in other ways. Um, and it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. Like I may not have beaten that fight just there if it wasn't for that strategy. So again, big shout out to MPKB for figuring that out. It's stuff like this that you don't have to employ in any other game mode that makes me love, not love, but like and enjoy zombie survival so much because it makes you think outside of the box. And I know not everybody likes doing that. Some people just like to breeze through and, and dominate everything. And that's what stage one is for. And that's what I spend. Honestly, I actually spend more time doing that uh, than playing the hard stuff that's exactly what I do when there's a new week of zombie survival I just put together I clobber together whatever team as long as it's not gonna as long as they're not gonna die and I just farm through the challenges on the first day 
and I get whatever score on stage one, stage 30. It doesn't matter what rank I am in, in the leaderboard for that for that time at, at the beginning. It doesn't matter because the rewards don't get figured out until the end, right? So I'm going to jump up. I'm going to leap up to uh, second place here as, as soon as it loads. Um, but <laughs> wow. But um, yeah, there we go. But in the meantime, like at the beginning of the week, I just play it because you got to play it five times. You can see there, Master of Survival number five. Win with two or more surviving characters five times. I want those crystals and I want those those tokens. So I just farm it like five, six times until I've killed all the zo enough zombies. I've, I've beaten it enough times and then I leave it. And on the very last day, like I'm doing right now because it only has 18 hours left on it, um, I actually get in my, my good run and hopefully secure a spot in the top three to get those extra rewards. Because look at this, right? We talked about the Eternal Flame in the dailies, in like the, the weekly challenge rewards. We talked about the Eternal Flame in the shop. There's also Eternal Flame rewards just for ranking. So even if you can only rank in the top 10, you're still getting an extra 500, which is an extra two OBs on a character every single week, right? If you can get in the top three, it's 700. And then if you get number one, it's another thousand, which is another four OBs. So really, really nice stuff here. This game mode is chock full of rewards, chock full of basically just free upgrades for, for free stats for your characters. Just to have to sacrifice a few, uh, you know, Uru that you weren't going to be using anyways. Probably, I would say, uh, halt or, or sort of pause your Uru com combining, like the, the mythic Uru combining. I used to love doing this, don't get me wrong. Um, I used to love doing this, right? I used to love doing this to try to get Odin's Blessings, but now... Instead of getting Odin's Blessings and just keeping them in my inventory because I have no one to equip them to, I genuinely think the Uru are going to serve me much better by upgrading the existing the, the existing stats on characters that I want to use all the time. You know what I mean? So that's a big thing. Again, I'll have another video kind of going into more detail on that. But just for example, on Hulk, because Hulk can't use very many Odin's Blessings, but because he values HP so much... It's actually huge to go in and just engrave it, right? There's a 2% chance that you get lucky and it's boom and it's going to boom for, for way more. But even if you don't, 508, right? It's an extra like a couple hundred HP on each one. That adds up, right? It's an extra like 800 base HP, which then gets multiplied by all the things, which then gets multiplied by his third skill, which multiplies his HP by another 50%. So you're going to get double whatever that number was that you put in. So it's like two, three, four, five K more HP. And then that's going to make him do more damage. So, yeah, I, I think people, you know, shouldn't sleep on that. I know it's like it seems like a whales thing. Oh, engraving, you know, awakening Uru. That's only for the whales. But there's a completely free way to do it in the game. And all you got to do is play a little bit of a, a zombie killer. So, yeah, don't don't sleep on this game mode, boys. Don't sleep on MK, MPKB. He's cooking up some some crazy good content. Thank you to him once again for, uh, you know, showing me the light. And uh, yeah, hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. Smash the down like, the thumbs down if you, if you hated it. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care.